Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 3rd of June 2024. We're publishing our Gold and Silver weekly update for the week ending the 31st of May. Firstly, an apology for the lateness of this video, which we normally produce on the weekend. We were away and came back later than anticipated. Gold and Silver were performing well last week until the inflation data arrived, causing prices to fall. Why did this happen? Let's take a look. First, as usual, just a quick reminder, we've set up a second channel entitled Finances Do Matter, covering a whole array of financial topics. We've placed a link in the description box and comment section below for those who have not as yet joined that channel. It has been a slight delay in producing videos there, but they will be running back to normal by the end of the week. Now, gold fell $6 last week, falling from 2,335 to 2,329, having hit a high of 2,374 and a low of 2,321, a fall of just 0.3%. Gold spread between high and low was only $53, which is really getting back to how it used to be. This was, though, admittedly disappointing. But we did forecast gold to trade between 2275 and 2400, which it did most comfortably. In sterling terms, it finished the week down five pounds at 1,830 pounds, and it was also down seven euros at 2,148 euros. Silver just fell one cent, falling from $30.43 to $30.42, having been as high as $32.86 and as low as $30.23. The difference between its high and low was $2.63, quite a reasonable spread. In sterling terms, it was up 5 pence, and in euros, it was up 0.02 euros at 28.07 euros. Last week, we predicted silver will trade between 28.50 and 33, which it also did comfortably. However, it did not fall below the $30 level. So, our lowest figure was a little bit too pessimistic. The gold to silver ratio fell from 76.7 to 1 to 76.6 to 1, so basically virtually no difference. Bitcoin stands at the time of recording this 67,811, that's down $1,600. Now equities last week were lower across the board. The Dow Jones down 383 at 38,686. The S&P 500 down 27 at 5,277. The Nasdaq down 185 at 16,735. And the FTSE 100 index closed at 8,275. That too was down 42 points. Oils were also lower. Brent crude down $1.01 at $81.11. And WTI crude down 73 cents at $76.99. And the dollar index, more or less unchanged really, just down 0.05 points at 104.67. Now last week we said that Friday was the day to note. We had personal income figures which came in at 0.3% for April, as expected. But consumer spending figures were lower than anticipated. The figures for April came in at 0.2% compared with March's figures of 07 and expectations of 0.4. This suggests the economy may be cooling a little. That said, though, the most important figures of the day were the PCE or inflation figures, and they came in exactly as anticipated, leaving the year-over-year -year PCE rate to stand at 2.7% and the core year-over-year -year PCE rate to stand at 28 And it's this core rate that governments pay most attention to. Gold reacted negatively to these figures, falling over $30 on the news and recovering ever so slightly towards the end of the week. Silver did the same, initially falling $1.20. The refusal of inflation falling further means that interest rate reductions are continually being delayed, and it's now very unlikely there'll be any reduction until September. Now one could say that US inflation has stalled, but the Fed wants to see it closer to 2% before it eases monetary policy further. If there is any political influence to aid the current administration, it would make sense to see the first reduction happen before the general election, though. Now, technical analysts believe gold and silver have further to rise short term, but comments about a potential Gaza ceasefire 
will bear down a little on the war premium invested in precious metals. So this coming week we have some interesting data coming out of the United States which could have an influence on prices. On Monday we have automobile sales, Tuesday factory orders, Wednesday ADP employment report and on Friday we have consumer credit and the US non-farm payrolls report for May. So there are a number of influences due this week culminating in Friday. Expectations are for 178,000 new jobs and any variance could indeed have an impact on markets and precious metals. So where do we believe these precious metals are going to move to this week? Well, gold and silver will be under pressure, but there's still some positive momentum. Friday will be important and could be a bit of a game changer short term. We're remaining cautious for precious metals this week as we can see the potential for the war premium to be reduced. With this in mind, we expect to see gold to trade between $2,275 and $2,375. With, just in case there are some upsets or good news, outlying ranges of $2,250 and $2,400. Silver, we're anticipating to trade with it roughly within a $2.5 range between $29 and $31.50, with $28.50 and $32.50 as outliers. What do you think? Please do share your thoughts. We would very much appreciate it if you would do that. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. Please, by all means, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe, press the bell sign. If you haven't done so, pop on over to Finances Do Matter and please ensure that you subscribe over there. So all that remains is to wish you a very prosperous week ahead. Watch out for this data, ADP employment report on Wednesday, and the jobs figures, the non-farm payrolls, or they call it the US employment report, on Friday. And keep an eye on what's going on in the Middle East. Thank you for listening. Now, before we completely finish this video, I'm reaching out to ask if there are any specific subjects you wish us to cover on this channel within the gold and silver space. We're very much aware that at the moment we are only producing weekly updates and although we've had no complaints about this, we've also not had any further suggestions. So if there is perhaps something that you feel we could cover that will be of interest and will attract your replies and responses and comments and likes, then please share those thoughts with us. It would be very much appreciated and it would give us a guide to make sure that we are delivering to you what it is that you require, expect and hopefully will respond to. Thank you. That's the end of this video.